Hello, I'm Dr. Russell Jennings, and um, I'm here to talk about some more problems with um, vascular rings. Today we'll talk about a double aortic arch, um, some of the problems and how to um, treat it. Um, <clears throat> I do want to thank everybody for all the enthusiastic responses we've had from our first video. Dozens and dozens of questions and a little bit overwhelmed, but I'm going to try to answer at least some of them as we go along. Um, I do want to uh, remind you that I'm not giving you medical advice, I'm giving you my opinions um, and sort of the innovative approach to um, the problems that we'll discuss in this series of videos. Um, my job, as I see it, is really to educate you and teach you to ask really good questions uh, to make sure your providers are giving the very best possible care. Um, I think that everybody will get the standard of care, which is provided by board certified pediatric surgeons and pediatric cardiac surgeons. But often that care is a little short of optimizing the patient outcomes. And for that reason, we've developed many new innovative techniques and approaches. And I'd like to talk a little bit about some of those today. Um, one of the questions, um, that comes up frequently is what about double aortic arches and uh, with airway compression and trachea motion. So I'd like to talk a little bit about that today. Um, but first we need to talk about what normal anatomy is. And normal anatomy um, consists of a trachea, which is sort of C-shaped rings like this. Um, and on that trachea is a posterior membrane and the posterior membrane is usually right here. Um, <clears throat> now that's not the only structure in the chest. There's other structures. We typically will have the esophagus, which would lie behind the trachea. It might be about this big. And behind that, we'll have the spine. Now the spine is made of bone and is immobile. It will be something like this. And then we have the blood, uh, the blood filled structures, mostly the aorta. The descending aorta is typically located about right here with the blood flow going from the head down. And I'm looking at this like a CAT scan. So we're looking at this uh, like a loaf of bread. We're looking at each slice of bread. And that's the descending aorta. Notice that it's typically about the level of the spine, the top of the spine. And the ascending aorta comes in front of the trachea is about like here. And the blood is coming towards us. Now the dot means it's like a tip of an arrow coming towards us. And the X means it's like the feathers on the arrow going away from us. And this aorta is usually connected to itself by an aortic arch, which would come about like this. So the blood would be flowing like this. In front, <clears throat> um, and part of this a little more advanced. There's a little bit of, there's a little more structure here. There's a typically a thymus right here, um, which would give me a slightly different color. The thymus would typically be about right here, taking up some space, keeping that aorta from moving more forward. And in front of that is the sternum, uh, which is bone, the breastbone. It's not going to move. So that's normal anatomy. Um, and you can see that everything has enough space and everything sort of works. What's a double aortic arch? Well, the double aortic arch occurs um, when, let's start with the spine here. Here's the spine. And let's draw in the blood vessels first. A double aortic arch when you have a right and a left. And in this case, this is the left side, and this is normal. Um, but in double aortic arch, the descending aorta is usually more anterior or more in front of the spine. And the, the ascending aorta is usually in its normal space, right here, coming towards it. And there's usually, well, in this case, there'll be a normal left arch, sort of above the right here. But in addition, there's a right arch, which goes like this. 
which comes around. Now this is the left side, and that's the right side. <clears throat> now, we have a problem. We still have the esophagus that has to fit in this space. Um, so the esophagus would typically be here, quite compressed um, and making it hard to swallow because it narrowed. You can see how it gets compressed. But some of you have already noticed there's a major problem with the airway. And this is the airway is typically A-shaped and the posterior membrane is significantly pushed up into the airway. So we have a number of problems with this situation. Um, but let's just point them out. One is we have the ascending aorta and the descending aorta has been moved anteriorly. Two is this part of the aorta is pushing on the back wall of the trachea. Three is we have tracheomalacia. Four is we have constriction by this arch, which is con contracting and pulling everything to be smaller. And what we haven't really shown you is that in this area right here is the right and left recurrent laryngeal nerve that control the vocal cords. So they're both at risk during the surgery. Also, just to make it interesting, there's a thoracic duct right here, which carries all the lymphatic fluid from your lower body up to your head. <clears throat> so there's actually six problems with a double aortic arch. Now, how can we repair this? Well, let's do it in stages, and we'll tell you our philosophy, which is different than most. Um, but we want to repair all of those problems not just one or two. So as a first step, if we start off with the spine, always a good reference point. And we start by working on the blood vessels. We, do, we take off this descending aorta. We leave a little stump here. And notice that stump right here is what's compressing the back wall of the trachea and the esophagus. We leave that little stump We've divided that right arch, we divide it right here, um, and we leave a little stump here. Uh, and we have now sort of released the trachea and, and, and by reducing the left arch. We've sort of made more space. The trachea remains. Uh, sort of where it is, right here, but it has a little more space. Uh, and the esophagus is sort of trapped where we had it uh, early on. But what we'll do is we'll move that esophagus from right here. We'll move that esophagus over to here. We'll give it much more space so it can open up, and this is called a rotation esophagus. Now this is just the first step of the procedure, but it gets us a good ways uh, to opening up the trachea. You can see how the trachea is already more open, but it's not quite enough because we still have to deal with this, that little stump, which is compressing that space where the trachea needs to go. And this descending aorta is part of that problem. So the next step in the operation that we tend to perform um, is to is the spine for reference is to move that a descending aorta and the stump down here. So we've moved it to the side of the spine where it belongs. The Ascending aorta remains where it hasn't really moved, and that left arch has moved a little bit to the left because we've moved everything a little bit that way. Now we have more space. The esophagus has been moved over to the side, so we have 
more space in here uh, behind the aorta for that um, uh, trachea. So our next move is to get that trachea more open. So the trachea now looks much more open than it was before. And in order to keep the tracheomalacia at bay, to control the tracheomalacia, we suture that posterior membrane to the spine. Now with little sutures right here. So what we've accomplished is not too dissimilar. You'll notice it's not too dissimilar from normal anatomy. We've opened up the trachea, we've moved the descending aorta where it belongs, take the, the Vascular diverticulum right here is against the spine, so it won't cause problems in the future. And it's taking the pressure off the back of the trachea. Then the esophagus, which is quite mobile, is de decompressed and is out of the way from the, the trachea. Uh, in using this strategy, we think we get the best results for vascular ring. What are some of the problems that would occur if we'd have just left left it like this um, because this is after all sort of the standard operation well one is that this end here and this end here can form a fibrous band that over time can reconnect and believe it or not you can actually re reconstruct or recapitulate the vascular ring where you have the ascending aorta the descending aorta the left arches here and the stump that was right here, and the stump that was left right here, then sort of get closer together until they essentially grow back together with the fibrous band. And when that happens, um, you're unfortunately left with essentially the same problem. The trachea is compressed in this little space, and the esophagus is then retrapped in the space it had right here. So it's not uncommon for that <clears throat> for that um, right-sided arch to recapitulate itself and end up with um, the same symptoms that we started with. The treatment is to go do this. Divide the, the recapitulated right arch, rotate the esophagus, perform a descending aortopexy as opposed to a So I hope that helps a little bit with our approach to a double aortic arch, um, where we could sort of try to recapitulate normal anatomy in an attempt to improve outcomes. Um, thank you very much for your time and attention. If you have any other questions, please uh, send them to me. Um, I'll try to get this video um, up on YouTube as well as um, on the websites. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I look forward to interacting.